Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal from the noise. It's our exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse, IBM's premier cloud event. Uh, new era for IBM in the cloud, Dave, and uh, it's exciting. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Meg Swanson, director of marketing for Blue Mix, um, which is the cloud action that's getting all the attention from the, the developers, also involved in uh, Dev at Pulse. Um, really a great opportunity. Meg, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, you know, we're going two days live coverage. We're, you bring a lot of energy. Thanks for, thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Plus, it's one of the hottest areas that we love, the developers. I mean, first of all, IBM has done a good job with the cloud yep. positioning, but developers' ecosystem is not a layup for IBM. Although they have developers, it's a new developer, I'm not going to say fickle community, but DevOps and the cloud, these guys want certain things a certain way. They don't want to have something jammed down their throat. So it's going to be a challenge, but you're on the team and you're going to straighten out what's going on. Tell us, what's the story? Well, I mean, from a, from IBM and developers, so we've got a great relationship with developers, both enterprise and born on the web through developer works. So we're four million strong in the outreach that we do with developer works. We have our own repository on GitHub and a lot of team members on Stack Overflow. So we've been with the development community for, uh, for a while. And uh, what's exciting about Bluemix is that we've done a lot of research with developers, with our beta clients and their large enterprise down to a two-person startup. So we've got all, all ranges. And we did just a lot of um, you know, alphas and betas and open research to try and find out what's the optimal development platform. So it was huge to us that it's open standards, open source based, um, huge that you can you know, use the, the programming languages that you're used to. and. I mean, we even even in, in designing the product and then in you know, the way we, that we name the different services, we made sure that we're using the, the names of services and the words that your know, developers are looking for, so that um, you know because you can approach it where you know a, a company is maybe pushing their software, but that's not going to come across as a very open and flexible platform. So open is us, the key. Open is yeah, the key. Exactly. Explain more about the, how the philosophy of open drives home here. How deep is it? Yeah, so we, I mean, IBM for about 20 years, we've been, you know, just driving um, support and influence to the open source community. And so uh, Bluemix is uh, is based on uh, Pivotal's Cloud Foundry. So, you know, completely huge community there that's been uh, developing and writing code. And, uh, and it's just core for what we do is that, you know, as we develop this platform, it absolutely had to be based on open standards and had to um, be not only as you go into the platform and you're developing and you choose your runtime and you choose your programming language, we wanted to make sure you could choose the best services that you want. And you know, maybe those are IBM products and we're thrilled to have those in there. Maybe they're third party products. Maybe they're third party partners like Twilio that we announced yesterday. And maybe they're open source technologies. So we just wanted to make sure that we have a rapid app development platform that uh, includes you know, all of those um, you know, all those services together. So Meg, you spend a lot of time obviously hanging with developers. It's, a, it's an interesting crowd uh, and everybody wants the, the development yeah. community, right? So how do you sort of differentiate from everybody else who wants the mind share, whether it's you know guys like Microsoft or who maybe HP's trying to get into the to the yeah. business, you know, everybody wants to own that that mind share. How does IBM differentiate from all the noise? Well, I, you don't ever own the developer mind share, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the approach is that you listen to the development community and you provide, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to provide the best content. You have to have the best platform and the fastest way to develop. And you know the companies that are going to step forward and do that and support the way and the model that developers you know, want to work in are the ones that you, know, you don't win the community, but you just you gain credibility and you start co-building together. So that's the great thing about announcing the open beta is we were very specific to not you know announce the full product and here it is and there are no changes. It's a beta, and even when you know we do a, a full announce of it. Uh, it still is going to be you know, an iterative you know, development process. So we're getting feedback from the developers and you know, pulling in the services that they're asking for and you know, changing you know, even just things within the user interface to make it easier. So it's really about building community and listening. And, uh, and you know, I think anyone who reaches out to the development community knows the second 
you um, you show up as marketing, you know, being in marketing, um, it, you've kind of lost, and and you've got to be very much you know, organic and working with the developers and not trying to market to them because they know the kinds of services they want, and if you just serve up, here's transparently what our product provides, and that's a value, then you know you've you've been able to to get. Uh, you know, them to, to start using the platform and then grow and grow. Yes, yeah, so people talk about learning experiences. This is an earning experience. Yeah. Um, now, so you talked about you just can't show up as marketing and start doing all <laughs> kinds of flashy things. So how do you make marketing a source of value to the developer community? Uh, it's being very transparent about the product and about, um, you know, what you can, can provide and offer and its authenticity. And, uh, and not you know over overselling what's in what's in the offering. So what we're um, focusing a lot on is showing you know here are the applications that companies like you are doing. You know here's you know transparently the kinds of uh, you know, time savings that they're having, kinds of cost savings that they get, and we'd love for you to try it because it's an open beta, completely free, and we're absolutely open to feedback. So it's about you know showing use cases of you know here are the different services available, here are different applications that have been developed. And then, you know, if that's of value to a developer in that industry, and we're hearing it is, which is great um, news, and, you know, we just keep building on that and building on the feedback that, uh, that we get from the community. Meg, I want to ask you about um, a comment or tell you about what Steve Mills said. So Steve Mills was on here. We talked about Blue Mix. He was super excited. Oh, historical, like, memory lane about all the different transformations of IBM. But he said around Blue Mix, creativity is the key. And I want you to talk about that and, and, and what's coming out of Dev at Pulse. What are some of the creative coolness and greatness coming out of Dev at Pulse? Yeah, so we um, we ran this two day um, developer focused uh, kind of the happening, right? Because it's not, it's not a full conference, it's not, a, we're not pitching products and it was you know, very much about creating experiences where developers could have hands-on activities with not only our products, but just kind of the latest and greatest that's out there. So we had the Oculus Rift headsets, we had Raspberry Pi, the drones, and, and you could really get hands-on and, and start building um, technologies. So when you think about, you know, Blue Mix and how we can spur creativity, our development teams are taking the Oculus Rift kits and thinking about, well, how do we, you know, develop applications that can, you know, help you immerse yourself in that kind of environment that, uh, that you know, Oculus Rift has created, and then taking you know a, a nod from the gaming community. If you look at the kinds of you know, research and uh, and user research and feedback that the uh, gaming community pulls in, like a lot of our speakers at the conference are um, game designers and game developers, and just really you know helping uh, position the the product design and product experience for developers uh, in a way that's extremely relevant to them and that you know they see day to day within a How about the data community. the data science aspect of it? I think big data because there's a lot of big mm -hmm. data going on here. How does that play into the whole blue mix thing? Yeah, so, um, so I mean, big data analytics is, is massive, right? Um, and so really what a lot of companies are looking at is how do they take the big data analytics and turn it into insights. And so you know, making sure we have the right data services uh, within Bluemix and within the applications you can build so that you can turn back to your company you know, real-time um, you know, analytics. So we've got a demo um, online right now that is just a very simple sentiment analysis through Twitter. But the example it shows is you know, pour in your data you know, use build an application where anybody in your company can clearly interpret the data and the customer records and you know the value it brings to the company. And they built that app. In so what's next? Uh, what's the next leg of the journey? Obviously, the launch, the the, the open. You're open for business. Uh, Steve was on earlier. Steve Robinson was talking about you're now open for business. Yep. Um, and you got thousands of signups overnight. Yes. Um, for Blue Mix. What's next? What's the next leg of the journey? Um, more thousands of signups, but it's really feedback. So it's taking you know all the signups that we've gotten, and we've been so thrilled seeing the company names that have come across too, um, because the company names as you know it's almost a startup environment. All of us on the product team we're getting real time alerts and texts about oh this company's in, this company's in, and uh, it's been really exciting to see you know, companies that maybe traditionally wouldn't have been part of the day one announced for IBM. 
uh, to come through. And so that's uh, that's been exciting. But you know, the next step is listening to that feedback and building out you know more around Internet of Things, more around big data analytics, and you know continuing to build and deliver on our roadmap. Well, Meg, we want to keep in touch with you. Obviously, it's a hot area. We love it. Um, we're going to be continuing to do more around the, the developers, certainly the platform as a service, the battleground, the middleware, billion dollar investment from IBM, open technologies. It's a perfect storm of innovation. Hey, jockeying for growth is uh, good for business, good for everyone. It's good for our media business. We're happy to cover it. We cover Cloud Foundry, we know the folks well at Pivotal as well, so, and we'll be at the OpenStack Summit as well in uh, Atlanta. So, platform as a service, Blue Mix, IBM's big move. Thanks so much, Meg, for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our show wrap up after this short break. <laughs>